Welcome to another interactive Rosetta tutorial video. In this lesson, I will teach you how to use interactive Rosetta selection and visualization tools to manipulate your structures more easily prior to running Rosetta protocols. I am running interactive Rosetta on a Linux system, but everything will be the same for Windows and Mac users. The styles of the controls will be a little different. First I should explain what these windows are. This black window up here is a PyMall window. It is the open source version of PyMall that is being used here. If you are familiar with PyMall already, this window does everything that a normal PyMall window would do. This lower window is known as the sequence viewer and will display the primary sequences of all the structures loaded in PyMall. The window on the left is the protocols window. This is where you can set up and run all of the supported Rosetta protocols. The lower part of this window contains a lot of selection and visualization controls, that I will be explaining shortly. OK. The first thing we have to do is load a structure from a PDB file. Feel free to use the load PDB button right here to load a structure from a file you have saved on your computer. This is a file that I like to use for all of my demonstrations for some reason, so I will use it again here. You can see that the structure is now viewable in PyMall. The default display hides all of the atoms and displays secondary structure in cartoon view. The coloring comes from DSSP. If I use the left click I can select residues in this structure. Left click, hold, and drag the mouse to rotate the structure. To zoom in and out, you need to right click, hold, and then drag the mouse. Using the mouse wheel does not zoom in and out but instead changes the Z clipping, which just basically alters how much fog is in the viewer. The primary sequence down here is selectable. When I select a certain region of the sequence, the corresponding residues in the structure become selected. Right-clicking unselects everything. Double-clicking on a row or a column label will select everything in that row or column. If you want to select discontinuous segments of the sequence, you need to hold down the control key while selecting. You may also select things directly in the Pi Mall window. Unfortunately, I was unable to figure out how to manipulate PyMall's API to have real-time synchronization. Whenever you leave the PyMall window, it will synchronize the selection, so keep that in mind. Now let's actually look at some atoms. Select some residues in the primary sequence, and then go over here to these six buttons. Let's click on the one with the blue sphere on it. Now you can see that I got a thick ball and stick viewing for these selected atoms. This button gives me a thinner ball and stick model. This is the thin sticks only model. Thick sticks only. And finally space filling. This hides the atoms. The color wheel down here allows me to recolor the carbon atoms. This little widget will look different depending on whether you are in Windows, Mac, or Linux. So let me color the carbon atoms purple because, why not? Now the carbon atoms are purple. Selecting default changes the atoms back to their ordinary colors. Chain will color the atoms differently depending on what chain the atoms are in. Look at this red bar over here. This is the color that the atoms in this chain will receive. In a minute I will load more chains and you will be able to see the extra colors. Let me unselect everything. These buttons over here control the ribbon rendering. This turns off all ribbons. This gives me a thin string view of the ribbons. And this gives me the usual cartoon display. This button allows me to recolor the ribbons, so let's color the ribbons green for now. This button reverts the coloring back to the default secondary structure coloring. This button here will color the ribbons according to chains, which can be useful for easily distinguishing between multiple loaded chains. You will notice that I did not have anything selected but yet the structure was still changing. If you use these buttons with nothing selected, Interactive Rosetta will apply the action to everything that is loaded. These buttons down here will turn labeling on and off. Let's select the first five or so residues. Clicking the label button will give me a label telling me the amino acid type in the PDB numbering for these residues. This button removes the labels. The surf off button controls surface displays and I will cover that in a later tutorial. These tools over here are some handy selection tools. This button will select everything loaded. This button will invert the current selection. Let's say I have already selected the first five residues. 
Pressing the invert button will select everything that is not the first five residues. This button selects all visible atoms only. The rest of these square buttons select certain atom types. This selects backbone atoms within the current selection. If nothing was selected, it would have selected all backbone atoms. These other buttons function the same way for side chain atoms, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and solvent atoms. The extend button will expand your selection by the indicated radius. So if I select these residues and hit extend, my selection will expand to include everything within a radius of 8 angstroms. You can change the radius to a different value if you like. Zoom will zoom in on the current selection. Center will place the pi mall center of rotation at the center of mass of the current selection. Let's unselect everything and zoom back out and recenter the molecule. This neighborhood button is useful for viewing everything within the region of a desired selection. Let's say I had a special interest in this residue right here. If I click the neighborhood button, then it will zoom in on this residue, beef up this residue and display everything within the radius cut off in thin sticks. So I can easily see the residue of interest and how it interacts with other residues in its neighborhood. This button down here allows you to change the current Rosetta scoring function. Unless you are someone who really knows how to use Rosetta well, I would not recommend changing this setting. When the Rosetta developers modify their primary scoring function, I will update the defaults and release a new version of Interactive Rosetta. What else can we do? Let me load the same PDB twice. Unfortunately I cannot see the second structure since they are right on top of each other. If I click the plus button here, it switches the controls to a manipulation panel with this green soccer ball. This allows me to rotate and translate selections in PyMall. You need to be careful when doing this because there is no undo button yet. Let's select the second chain and translate it out of the way of the second one. You can click and drag on the soccer ball to move it around using the mouse motion. These buttons around the edges will nudge it in those directions. My creator says that this nudging is useful because he can have trouble moving the mouse evenly. This phenomenon is unknown to us computers. I can also rotate the structure in the same way after changing to rotation mode. Now I can show you the chain coloring. If I color the ribbons by chain, you can see that I have a red structure and a blue one. Now there are some more things you can do in the sequence viewer. Let's delete that first chain by selecting part of it and clicking the close button. Yes, I am sure I want to close it. Now I can save the second model by highlighting part of its sequence. Here it wants a file name for the structure, so let's give it a new name. If you did not have anything selected, close and save assume you want to close or save everything. The save image button will take a picture of the current view in PyMall and save it to a PNG file. This color will change the PyMall background color. Here is what a white background color looks like. This button is the stereo view toggle button. Some humans like viewing structures in stereo. This does not compute for me since I do not have qualia. This button changes the coloring of the primary sequence. This colors by secondary structure and this color by B factor. This last button will change the column labels to display the actual PDB numbering instead of the absolute index of the residues in their sequences. Let's load another structure. This button will join two selected chains together into one chain. The Renumber button will take a single residue selection and rewire the sequence such that the selected residue is the end terminus. If I right click on a chain label over here, I can modify the model name and or the chain identifier. So let's change the chain ID to R for Rosetta. OK. Let's get rid of that chain and now I'll show you something cool. Let's say I want to look at GFP but I do not have a local copy of GFP. But I know that the PDB code for GFP is 2B3P. As long as I have an internet connection, I can input the code here and then fetch the structure from RCSB. It will ask me if I want to save a local copy before loading into PyMall. I don't need to do that though. This is a new window. Looks like GFP has some waters and header atoms in it. I can click these buttons to toggle whether these atoms will be loaded into PyMall or not. Also, if I had multiple chains in the structure I could opt to only load certain chains. And there is our GFP molecule.
One last thing, this S button is very important if you want to do some of the more advanced Rosetta protocols. Some protocols are not available in Pi Rosetta, so you can set up a remote Linux computer to run vanilla Rosetta and then interactive Rosetta will automatically send your jobs to the server in the proper formats. Also, there is a bug in Windows Pi Rosetta that slows down its speed for some of the protocols, so this server is used to speed up those calculations as well. In another video I will walk you through setting up this server. Finally, if you would rather read about all of these things instead of listen to me again, you can click the blue question mark to get to a help web page. Well that's the end of this tutorial. I hope that this has been useful for you.